this sermon becomes a waste of time if nothing about it comes out of your mouth. Dr. Tony Evans says the truth that goes into us is meant to change the words that come out of us. So if you only hear the preaching, then it becomes dormant information that is of no ongoing value to your spiritual victory in life. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. The Bible teaches that faith gives us the power to move mountains. Today, Dr. Evans explains that moving mountains means more than just rearranging some geography. Let's join him as he explains. When the Bible speaks symbolically of a mountain, when it's not talking about a physical location, but a spiritual principle, it's talking about something too big for you to climb, too wide for you to get around that you can't go through it because it's too thick. It's called a mountain, an oversized situation that is limiting your progress, locking you down, and keeping you from moving forward. Well, such is the use of the word in Mark chapter 11. Jesus is going to refer in a moment to a mountain, symbolically referring to a situation too big for you to climb over, go around, or peer through. It's a mountain. We find in verse 20 of Mark 11 these words. As they were passing by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots up. So according to verse 12 through 14, Jesus is hungry and there's a fig tree. But when Jesus walks over to the tree, he sees the leaves but no figs. The leaves give you the impression to expect some figs. So what we got is a pretend tree. It looks like it's ripe. It looks like it's ready. It looks like there's some figs to be had. But when he arrives... It was showtime. It was leaf with no life. He looks at the tree and says, no one will ever eat from you again. Why? Because you fake. You got leaf, but no life. There's no fig there. You fake tree. Between verses 12 to 14, when he speaks to the tree, no one will eat from you again. And verse 20, when he declares, or when they see that the tree is rotten from the root up, Jesus goes to the temple. Between these two tree scenarios, he goes to church. And that familiar story, he turns over the tables in the church. Why? Because the leaders were fake. In other words, they were using the church to rob people, steal from people. They were using the church house to mess folk up. So the reason he says there will be no figs and the reason that the tree has died is because of the spiritual lesson he was going to show his disciples about what was happening in the church. The big deal is this all happened overnight. In other words, the day before, he just said, nobody's going to eat from you again. That's all he said. But they come the next day and the tree is gone. It's not just gone. It's gone from the bottom to the top. It had completely withered when it was leafed the day before. In other words, the leaves were all working. There was no fruit, but it looked good because the leaves were there. We don't even have leaves in the morning. Peter said, how could that much happen this fast? Jesus answers in verse 22, have faith in God. Jesus, how could this tree change this quick? Well, it's simple. Have faith in God. And I say to you folks, if you do what I did, you'll get what I got. So he's not talking about him anymore. He's talking about them and what they could expect in the mountains of their lives. If you say to this mountain, 
I started off before I ever said anything to the tree, I had faith in God. So before I said anything, I believed something. What I believe determined what I said. Have faith in God. So God is expecting those of us who have been created in his image and recreated in Christ Jesus to have so much authorization from heaven that we can dictate to mountains what it ought to do. But in most of our cases, mountains are dictating to us. Mountains are telling us, I ain't going nowhere. I don't care what you say. I ain't going nowhere today. I didn't go anywhere yesterday. I'm going to be here for the rest of your life. I own you. And the mountain is telling us what to do while we say an amen. Stay with me here. The Bible says, therefore, verse 24, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. Whoa. He introduces another communication word, prayer. Okay, wait a minute. Prayer is talking to God. I am talking to the mountain. So I'm having two conversations here. I'm having a conversation with God. Why am I having a conversation with God? To make sure that the conversation I'm getting ready to have with the mountain has been authorized. Because if it's not authorized in my contact with him, there will be no power in my communication with it. But if it is authorized in my communication by faith with him, then I have the authority to communicate it with it. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 says that prayer releases what God has already intended to do. Ah. Prayer doesn't get God to do what God doesn't want to do. Prayer releases what God has already intended to do. So you're not coaxing God trying to motivate him to do something when you talk to him. He has already determined what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. All you're doing is bringing it from the power company into your personal scenario because it's already been predetermined what God is going to do and what he's not going to do. So he wants you to not believe merely about something he will do. He wants you to believe about something he has already done. And if somebody's already done something, you don't have to coax them to do it. All you're doing is pulling it down into your experiential reality. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 11 says that God lets us command him regarding the things that he has purposed. God literally allows us to tell him what to do. Why? Because he's already decided to do it. Well, I don't know about you, but knowing I got that kind of clout, I sure want to get that kind of hookup. If I got a clout that I can talk to this mountain and make this mountain get out of my life, get out of my way, leave me alone, bug off, give me a break, and I can literally tell the mountain, get out of here. That's what he says. He says, and you're saying it. You're you talking to the problem. After having faith in God, after being authorized. Look at how the two works together in Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. Ooh. Paul tells the Romans, I'm preaching. The word is near you. Because you're listening. If you receive the word, it's in your heart. But it's also supposed to be in your mouth. That's why it's called the word of faith. Because it's a belief word you're expressing. 
So he calls it the word of faith that is the declaration of what you believe the will of God is in this scenario about this situation. So he actually doesn't want you just thinking about it. He wants you expressing it. He wants you to determine what the will of God is based on God's will, based on God's word, based on God's character. And he wants you, based on the fact that you believe it in your heart, to demonstrate you believe it by letting it come out of your mouth. He says, I preach it so that you will use it, which means this sermon becomes a waste of time if nothing about it comes out of your mouth. That all you did was sit and listen to a biblical lecture because it's unutilized power, assuming there's even faith to grab it. The great tragedy this morning is that the preaching will be left in the pew because the word will not come out of the mouth. So if you only hear the preaching, Paul says in Romans 10 verse 8, and it doesn't become your word of faith, believing it enough to express it, then it becomes dormant information that is of no ongoing value to your spiritual victory in life. God wants his word not only to be heard, but to be articulated in the scenario. Now you are utilizing the word of God. That's the word of faith. The word of God now has become active. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 that the word of God is alive and active and sharper than two-edged sword. It's not just speech. It's authoritative speech because of who's doing the talking. Dr. Evans will come back in a moment with a real-life example of how authoritative that kind of speech can be. First, though, I want to let you know that his brand new book is already on its way to becoming a bestseller, and it builds on what we're learning in our current series. It's called Watch Your Mouth, a practical look at ways to tame our tongues. As we've been hearing, the things we say can sometimes be as destructive as dynamite, but our words also have the power to bring blessing encouragement, and healing to the people around us. This book will teach you the lesson that every superhero has to learn, to use your power for good. This life-changing book has just been released, but you can get it today as our gift to you when you come alongside The Alternative and support Tony's ministry with a contribution of any amount. This is a limited-time offer, so be sure to visit us at TonyEvans.org right away and make the arrangements. Or call our 24-hour resource request line at 1-800-800-3222. I'll have that information again for you later on, but right now, here's Dr. Evans with more of today's message. Okay, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, Satan is attacking Jesus, the temptation in the wilderness, right? He's attacking Jesus. You know what Jesus did? Quoted scripture. Jesus had a Bible study with the devil. The devil says, turn these stones into bread. So Jesus Googles bread. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He turned to Satan and he said, Satan, let me read you this verse. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Satan comes to him two more times. Two more times, Jesus quotes the scripture to him. See, what Jesus knew is that the devil is allergic to scripture. And since the devil is allergic to scripture, when he had a Bible study with scripture, he discovered that God likes baseball. Three strikes, you're out. Three passages, the Bible said the devil couldn't take it anymore and had to leave. See, most of us have it backwards. We say, okay, we're talking about our mountain, our problem that's, that's huge. And so what we'll say is, uh, I know God is able, but let me tell you about the reality of my situation. Mm. Yeah, I, I know he can fix it, but, but come on, come on now. Let me, let me, I've been dealing with this. My mother was dealing with this. Yeah, I know this. Okay, we got that backwards. Okay. Talk about your mountain and then bring God in. Okay, this is my mountain, but God said... This is my problem, but God said, yeah, I know what you're doing, devil, but God said, 
don't start with God and end with your mountain. Start with your mountain and end with God so that he has the final word over your situation. However, I'm assuming something. I'm assuming you're willing to take the time to find out what God said. Oh. Because most folk, even Christians, aren't willing to do that. It takes too much time. I'm going to miss too many television programs. I'm going to miss so much this. I'm gonna, I don't have time for that. I can come to church and hear a sermon. Okay, good. Live with your mountain. Or do you want to get rid of your mountain by telling it what God has to say to it? Now, he does give a condition here. There is a little condition that he doesn't want you to lose out on, and that is in verse 25. He says, whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgression, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive you of your transgression. He says, you can't be asking for my help and be living with an unforgiving spirit. Forgiveness means I'm no longer holding a grudge, okay? I'm no longer holding a grudge. Doesn't mean there are consequences and all that, but it means I'm not going to let you block me getting rid of my mountain, okay? Why? Because of the vertical and the horizontal. You want a vertical from me, you got to give a horizontal out here. But the idea here, the change that should occur with your mouth is when you speak what God speaks to the mountain that won't go away. When you dictate to it, not only pray about it, he says when you pray, but when you say, you gotta pray and say. You're having a little health problem of some sort, so you go to Walgreens. You get some over-the-counter stuff to make you feel better. The only problem is you're not feeling better, it's getting worse. So you decide over-the-counter won't do. Over-the-counter is not enough because it's not strong enough, it's not vibrant enough, and I still feel bad. Well, now that means you're gonna call the doctor. So you call the doctor, the doctor says, come in, and you go in, and you say, this is what's wrong, and nothing I am doing is making it better. I, I'm, I'm taking all the medicine I know to take, I'm doing all I know to do, I've spent all the money I know to spend, but it's not getting better. Doc, doctor says, well, let me check you out. So doctor checks you out, and the doctor discovers the problem is much deeper. This problem is deeper. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not over the counter. You thought it was, but it wasn't. It's, it's a lot bigger. That's why it keeps getting worse and worse and worse, although you've been trying and trying and trying. So the doctor takes out a prescription form and he starts writing. He starts writing his word on his prescription. Now, you don't understand his word. Because if you can understand it, he ain't a real doctor. A real doctor's, <laughs> real doctor's scribble. You can't understand it. Okay. All you know is he's authorized to write it. Because he's a doctor. So he's authorized. But you also believe and trust his knowledge. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't have gone to him. So you go to him because you trust his knowledge. You take what he says that he writes. So you have his word in your hand. And you don't believe that strict nine that he's written down there. You don't believe he's trying to hurt you. You believe he has given you something to make your life different. The problem is right now it's only words on a piece of paper. That's all you got. You got words on the people's paper. Sure, you don't feel any better. You don't feel any different. Everything is the same as when you walk in the doctor's office except his word. His word says, if you will get this prescription filled, take this once a day for, for a week, you should begin to see changes in your health. You believe his word that he wrote because he's authorized to write it. So you get in your car. And you make your way back to Walgreens. You make your way to the place that couldn't help you before when you were trying to do it yourself. Because you know in the back of Walgreens is 
a place called a pharmacy. Now, you couldn't get to the pharmacy on your own because you hadn't been authorized. See, without authorization, you can't ask for something back there because the stuff back there is for mountains. The stuff back there, that's not over-the-counter stuff. That's stuff that's, that's for deeper stuff back there. So you got to be authorized to go back there. Even though you don't understand everything he wrote, you trust him because he wrote it. The pharmacist comes up, says, may I help you? All you say is, would you fill this prescription? That's, that's all you say. Because you believe that what is written is a, you don't get into a conversation with the pharmacist. Okay, come on, explain to me. Let me go to back there with you and see what you're putting in this cap. Let me, let me go back there with you. God. You don't get into all that. Because you're operating on faith based on the word that is written. He brings you some medicine based on what is written and you've got the gall to trust it enough to take it. You don't understand it. You can't explain it. You don't know the ingredients in it. All you know is my authorized person wrote it down. He filled it. I'm going to trust him to use it because I believe they know what they are doing. Now watch this. You can have people with knowledge who don't have authorization. See, a lot of us are spending all of our time talking to psychologists, spiritual folk who sound like they know what they're talking about, but they can't write a prescription. So after your meeting is over, after your phone call is done, after your complaining is over, you're still sick as a dog because they couldn't write anything to make you better. All they could do is help you analyze how bad off you really are. But when you talk to a doctor who's been authorized to write a prescription and you give the written word to the pharmacist, he gives you something that can change your health and make you feel better. If you tired of your mountain controlling you, God says, I want you to go to what I wrote because I know and I've been authorized. And if you will trust me enough, even though you don't understand everything that's in here, even though you can't figure it out, even though you don't know Greek, you don't know Hebrew, you don't know Aramaic, you know enough English to read what I said and to quote what I said. And when you use it and speak to the problem and mountains in your life, you will watch your addictions go jump in the sea. You'll watch your enemies go jump in the sea. You'll watch your emotions go jump in the sea. You'll watch your circumstances go jump in the sea. Why? Because I am the almighty God and I have authorized your victory. Dr. Tony Evans, wrapping up a message he calls Power in Your Palate. The full-length version of this lesson is available on CD. Just check with us for details on getting a copy. Better yet, you can request it as a part of our current 11-part teaching collection called Watch Your Mouth. All the information you need is waiting for you at TonyEvans.org. While you're there, don't forget to request that brand new book I told you about earlier, also called Watch Your Mouth. A look at what God can build into our lives when we control what comes out of our mouths. As I mentioned, it's our thank you gift when you help us keep Tony's teaching on this station with any contribution, large or small. It's the perfect follow-up to what we've been learning on the broadcast, but be sure to request it right away before this special offer runs out. You can do that online at TonyEvans.org. That's TonyEvans.org. Or give us a phone call at one 800 800 3222 and let one of our staff members help you. That's 1 800 800 3222. When we start talking, it's only a matter of time until our words wind up hurting someone, unless we're using God's words instead of our own. Dr. Evans will tell us about that tomorrow. I hope you'll join us. The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you.